Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu, and I work in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department here at Dunwoody. Today we're going to cover a little bit about wire resistance and voltage drop and um, looking at a few of the, the things uh, having to do with conductor sizing. Okay, now that we've looked at how we can calculate out our resistance of a wire, let's create a circuit. So as we wire up our circuit here, we're going to make a load. And let's make it an AC circuit, since this is mainly done with power circuits. So we'll give our circuit 120 volts. And let's say we have a 20 amp load. And this is a resistive load. Okay, but we have a certain amount of resistance as we flow through on this circuit as this conductor goes. Okay, so we have a conductor value. Okay, so using our R equals KL over CM, let's take that same number 12 conductor, okay, and we know our number 12 gauge conductor is equal to 6,530 circular mils. We also know that we came up with a K value of that number 12 gauge wire, and that K value is equal to 12.6 ohms per circular mile foot. Now we want to get a length. How far away is it from our panel to our load? Well, let's say we have a really long yard and it's 125 feet. Okay, now this circuit is actually indicative of, if I was to sit and look at it, it's just basically resistance all the way along it. Okay, and we have all the resistance here same thing here. We have resistance that's traveling throughout from our source to our load coming back. Okay, so let's figure out what kind of resistance we have for this wire and this wire because it is additive in this circuit. So if I take and plug this into my formula, taking 12.6 times 125 feet divided by 6,530 I'm able to come up with a, a resistance value of 0 0.241 ohms. Okay, that resistance is this resistance here, and it would be this resistance here. If I have 125 feet going to one side, I'm going to have 125 feet returning. So that would give me 0 0.241 ohms here, and I would have 0 0.241 ohms here. Okay, if I have a 20 amp load, it's a series circuit, okay, so that means I'm going to have 20 amps here, 20 amps here. So I take and I multiply that times 20 times that, I know I'm going to drop 4.82 volts at this wire, and I'm going to drop 4.82 volts at this wire, just like any other series circuit. Okay, what's left? is what's going to be dropped here. Okay, what's left is 110 point, what is it, 8 or 4, 4, 4, 6 volts there. Oh, I have much voltage there. I lost a whole lot of voltage there. Okay, that's the risk of wire. That's the risk of sizing our wire. Looking at how, what size we have looking at the type of material we have, and looking at basically this end run, what we get. Okay, this wouldn't harm my circuit too much, but let's say it was 80 volts. Okay, I would ended up dropping, you know, 20 here and 20 here. I would be left with 80 volts. Not many motors are going to start very well at 80 volts, especially if they're rated at 120 volts. The electrical code, or the National Electrical Code, lets us know that we want a minimum recommended of 3% voltage drop. Okay, so I only want to drop, if I've got 120 volts, I take 120 times 0.3, I only want to drop 3.6 volts. Okay, I'm dropping quite a bit more here. And that 3.6 volts means overall, the whole circuit. Okay, so I would want to calculate something different, or I would want to increase my wire size, or I couldn't have that receptacle at the end of my yard. I'd have to bring it up closer so I don't drop as much voltage. So taking this resistance formula and taking this value into, into, the, 
equation, looking at the two of them, we have one more formula I want to go through today, and that's called my voltage drop formula. Okay, so instead of taking our K times our L over our circular mills and coming up with that resistance, treating it like that series circuit, we actually have another formula that we can use that simplifies the whole thing. I'm able to take voltage drop formula, and this voltage drop is going to tell me how much I'm dropping here combined. I have a number 2, okay, and that 2 signifies going to my load and coming back from my load. K, which we already know about, that's that constant 12.6 in this case that we use the code book for. I, which is my current, 20 amps. L, which is that length, a little bit too long for this circuit at 125 feet. And circular mill area, once again we have that circular mill area. Plugging all those numbers in, just like we had, we end up coming up with our 9.64 volts. Okay, so rather than sit and figure it out for each individual wire, whenever I'm talking a circuit, I want to use voltage drop. Whenever I'm talking a wire or the resistance of the wire, I want to use the resistance formula. Both gives me my desired result. Both will tell me how much voltage I have at the load. And that's the key thing we always want to remember. It's what is left? What are we going to get for that, that load that we need to power up? If we take off too much heading out, we have to take that into account and either upsize the wire, make it a bigger wire, make it a little shorter distance, or not have quite the power for load. That is wire resistance and voltage drop. If you have any other questions, please see someone at the Elfman Student Success Center and visit a tuner at any time. Thank you.